Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the classical uh, complement pathway. Okay, so we've just got to the point where we have split C5 into C5A and C5B. Okay, now we've seen that C5A is another anaphyla toxin like C3A. Uh, and now what we want to see is what C5B is going to do. So, C5B is going to assemble with a bunch of other complement proteins to form what's known as the membrane attack complex, which is going to cause osmotic lysis of the microbe. So let's see how this works. So what's going to happen is that C5B is firstly going to assemble with the C6 complement protein. So let's draw this happening. Okay, so here is C5B here. Okay. And then what's going to happen is another protein is going to come and bind to this, which is C6. So this involves the bringing in of this next protein, which is C6. Okay, and C6, you'll notice, is different from uh, many of the other complement proteins that we've seen, in that it isn't being cleaved into an A and a B. Okay, so we'll colour in C6 in, whoops, vivid purple here. Okay, so this is C6 here. And at the moment, this is still free in the interstitium. It hasn't bound the membrane of uh, the microbe yet. Okay, so C5B is not in green, it's in blue. Right, okay, so we've bound C6. Now what's going to happen is we're going to bind C7. Okay, so onwards and upwards. In comes the next complement protein, which is C7. Okay, and again, like C6, this doesn't have uh, an A and a B portion. It's not being cleaved into two. Okay, so we've now got three of these proteins all bound together. So here still is C5B at the front. Here is C6. And here is C7. Whoops, that's... Uh, how can I rectify that? Um, can't find an obvious way. C7, there we go. <laughs> Squashed in on the end, right. So we'll have C7 in orange. Okay, here it is. And then we've got uh, C6 in pink. And then uh, C5B in blue. Right. Okay, and then the final one that you're going to add on, well actually not the final one, we're going to add on about 18 more things afterwards, uh, but uh, the final thing we're going to add on at the moment is C8. And when you add on C8, the whole thing is going to get implanted into the membrane of the microbe. So if we draw our microbe back again here, so here is our microbe, then basically the microbe will have a cell membrane. And this cell membrane will be a phospholipid bilayer. So I'm now going to draw this phospholipid bilayer out. So these two lines represent the inner and outer leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so you'll have loads of little phospholipids, which are often just denoted like so, a head and then two tails in this phospholipid bilayer. So I might just draw a few more so that you get the message. Okay, there we go. I'm not going to draw too many. Um, so basically, this is the outer leaflet, this outer layer that faces the outside world. This is known as the outer leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. And the inner layer, which faces the cytoplasm of the cell, this is known as the inner leaflet. So that means that this side is the cytoplasmic side of the membrane, and this side is the uh, extracellular side. So then we're going to have the inner leaflet. So when C8 binds to this um, C5B, C6, C7 complex, uh, then it's going to bind onto the end here next to the C7, and the whole thing is going to be implanted into the phospholipid bilayer. So let me show this here. So they're all going to get slightly smaller in this drawing. Okay, so this bottom one here is C8 near the cytoplasmic side. This one here is C7. This one here is C6. And up at the top, this is C5B. Right. Okay, so I'll try and colour code it. So in has come another complement protein, which is C8 here. Okay, and we'll have C8 in green. Okay, so this one is in green. 
and basically the entire complex is now inserted into the phospholipid bilayer. I'm a little worried that if I colour this in it might get a little bit difficult to read the actual names. I'll try and be gentle. Okay, whoops, oh dear, no, I've totally ruined the colour coding. I've just coloured in C7 uh, blue. Right, forget the colour coding. Um, <laughs> C7 should have been in orange, of course, never mind. Right, so you've got the C5B, C6, C7, C8 uh, complex now in the membrane of the, um, of the microbe. And now what's going to happen is a whole bunch of C9 proteins, which I'll draw like this, are going to come and bind onto um, this C5, B, C6, C7, C8 complex. And basically what's going to happen is that you are going to assemble a ring here made up of C9s. Okay, so sitting alongside this C5, B, C6, C7, C8 complex, you're going to get a ring like this, which is made up of absolutely loads of C9 proteins. Okay, so it's generally made up of between 10 and 18 uh, C9s. Okay, so let me try and draw this. I'll go for 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There we go. Okay, so I hope this is getting the message across that all of these C9 proteins are going to come together and they're going to polymerize to make this sort of tube in the membrane of the microbe here. Okay, so one of these little subunits of this tube here is one C9 protein. So what I'm highlighting in in vivid purple, this is one of these proteins here, one of these C9 proteins. Okay, right. So, there is a name for this channel that goes through the membrane of the microbe. It is what's known as the MAC, and this stands for the Membrane Attack Complex. Now, what does this Membrane Attack Complex do? Well, basically, it destroys the integrity of the cell membrane, and this is deadly for the microbe, and let me explain why. Basically, if we have our microbe here, in the cytoplasm of the microbe, the concentration of solute is much higher than the concentration of solute in the extracellular fluid. Okay, So the osmolarity, which just means how much stuff is dissolved in the cytoplasm, is much higher in the cytoplasm, or sorry, osmolarity doesn't specifically mean how much is uh, dissolved in the cytoplasm, it just means how much is dissolved in any fluid. It's just a measure of how much solute you've got dissolved in a fluid. So the osmolarity of the cytoplasm is much higher than the osmolarity of the um, extracellular fluid. We say that there is an osmotic gradient across the cell membrane, which just means they're not the same, basically. Okay? And um, this means that there is a, an osmotic drive of water to move water into the cell, okay? So um, the water potential of the extracellular fluid is much greater than the water potential of the intracellular fluid. And basically, water will move through into the cytoplasm if it can. And we've just created a tube in the cell membrane, which is going to allow water molecules to move through. So basically, you're going to get a net movement of water into the cell through this tube via osmosis. And when you do this, what's going to happen? Well, the water content of the microbe is just going to go up and up and up. And water requires a volume, so the volume of the cytoplasm is going to go up and up and up. And that is going to mean that the microbe expands and expands and expands until the cell membrane can't take it anymore and bursts. And when the microbe bursts due to osmosis, this is what's known as osmotic lysis. Okay, so it's lysis means breaking apart. Okay, and it's due to osmosis, so we call it osmotic lysis. 
So these membrane attack complexes are going to allow water to move into the cytoplasm of the microbe, which it wouldn't usually be able to do. Well, not do any great deal anyway, because water is a very polar molecule and will struggle to cross the phospholipid bilayer, uh, which is hydrophobic in the core here. Okay, um, so when you create this channel, water can move nicely through the channel, and that will lead to the volume of the microbe going up, and uh, that will lead to the microbe bursting via osmotic lysis. Okay, so that kills the microbe. So we have now seen the three functions of complement. One was that the C3B could bind to the um, bind to the glycoproteins on the surface of the microbe and lead to opsonization of that microbe, make it more tasty for uh, phagocytes to phagocytose it. Okay. Two, you produce the anaphylatoxins C3A and C5A, which activate degranulation of mast cells, and then the histamine is going to cause uh, type 1 activation of endothelial cells. Okay. Three, uh, you form these membrane attack complexes which lead to osmotic lysis of uh, the microbe. Okay, so this is part of the, well, the innate immune system meets the adaptive immune system because all of these proteins will do this to any old bacterium. However, they require the antibody uh, at first, which is part of the adaptive immune system. So it's an interesting interplay between the adaptive immune system and the innate immune system. Okay, uh, that's all for this video. In the next video, what we'll move on to is uh, the mannose binding lactin complement pathway.